today I was going to speak to you through the Chopra Global Channel, uh, which you're on right now, about the Divine Feminine, the 21 day meditation that we have right now that is going on, on the Divine Feminine with Alicia Keys as our co-host. And I was mentioning that I've known Alicia for a long time. Uh, in fact, I conducted the wedding ceremony uh, uh, and uh, it was a great uh, event in Europe and we've been friends for a long, long time. Alicia is a, a very um, talented uh, artist, as you know, but you may or may not know that she's also the perfect embodiment um, uh, of the Divine Feminine, represents everything that we would associate with the Divine Feminine. Uh, beauty, intuition, affection, nurturing, uh, tenderness, transformation, healing. So it's, uh, it's a great privilege right now for me uh, just to have her uh, reach her audience and my audience with this, uh, with this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, Instagram post. Uh, just there she is, Alicia. Yay! Thank you for your beautiful words. I appreciate them so much. I was I was listening to you because I love to hear you speak so much. So I was just listening uh, to all your all your great words. How are you today? I, I'm good, and I was sharing with everyone how long we've known each other. That I was at your wedding, and then. You know, and so much has transpired since then. Uh, your amazing career has always been amazing. Uh, at that <laughs> time, by the way, I was watching CNN and you were doing something um, at that time as well, which was huge, I remember. Uh, wow. And uh, now we're talking about the Divine Feminine. Yes. And I was just going to give a little history of my interest, and that was, you know, we associate masculine energy with, at least culturally, we associate masculine energy with conquest, with predation, mm. domination, hunter-gatherers, strength, uh, but a different kind of strength, muscular strength and power right. over, over others. Whereas the divine feminine, which started to emerge after the hunter-gatherer age, when, you know, the age of agriculture is the first time that matriarchal societies appeared in Africa, in India, in many indigenous peoples all over the world. And then unfortunately, 500 years ago, when the scientific revolution took over, again, we went back to this very hard, mm. you know, predatory impulse. And now we need to invite the divine feminine back if we want to evolve. Otherwise, we are headed in the direction of I think extinction. If we continue what we're doing right now, yeah, you know, right. climate change, war, terrorism, climate change, extinction of species, and everything else that's happening in the world right now, this is the legacy of the hunter gatherers, and we need to move on. And so I'm so grateful that you are leading this, and that you have given your name and uh, your reach. So we can actually mm -hmm. work together for a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. So, well, Alicia. Big, this is so good. And thank you to everybody tuning in right now. Because, listen, everywhere I go, everyone's telling me, thank you for the, for the meditation. I'm doing the meditation. I'm loving the meditation. And so, you know, first, big love to everybody who's tuning in to, to what you have to say beautiful Deepak and, and, and to your leadership and just the sharing of, of, of what's happening in the world and, and this idea of, so first I just want to give big love to everybody tuning in. If you have done the Divine Feminine Meditation, please drop it in the chat. If you are thinking about doing it, drop it in the chat. If you have any questions about how to do it, drop it in the chat or any questions about what you've been experiencing during it because we'd love to answer some questions too that that's really really fun um i've i've been loving this process too um obviously i love our friendship and and every time i talk to you there's just these ultimate jewels that continue to be like 
dropped on all of us, which is why I love the Divine Feminist. Jessica said that she finished all 22. Yes, Konia said she started it. There's a lot of people that are definitely um, in the mix there. But I think that it's been really interesting um, thinking about this rebalance. And, and I think I, I saw somebody say that, obviously, you know, um, black women ruled tens and hundreds of thousands of years ago. And, and, and so to your point, you know, there, I think there was always in our ancient civilizations and our ancient cultures, there was a reverence for the feminine. You know, there was Absolutely. a real respect and reverence for the feminine. And, and that's exactly what, what we're saying, which is that this idea that the feminine and masculine are inside of all of us and how we can all think about how we can be more balanced with, with more feminine, with re revering the divine feminine within all of us and giving that the right respect. So I think that it's, I think that that's to your point, exactly a lot of the cause of the imbalance. Some people have said what, this is a question I got now. I'm just going to start throwing out some interesting questions. And if you guys have any like interesting, tough questions, someone said to me, what about the divine masculine? And it, and I was interested in what you thought about this idea of coming um, in contact with this concept of the, the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Does it mean if we say divine feminine that there's not a divine masculine? Is there also a divine masculine? Is there only masculine and feminine? Is there something to looking at the masculine in, in this idea of divinity? Or do we already do that and that's kind of what's throwing it off? Talk to me about what you think about this idea about also being in balance with the divine masculine. What do you okay. think about that? <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I think about that, Alicia, but I was going to share something with you privately. Tell me. Tell I was me. going to share something with you privately, but oh. now I'm going to share something that I was going to share with you publicly. Privately, okay, okay. bring okay. it to us. So three days ago, I interviewed Oprah on my podcast uh, for Audible. Yes. And uh, she was very gracious. She was as usual. She, you know, she she champions everybody. And her secret to life, she said to me a long time ago, and I want to share this with everyone. When she was 19, she was uh, freelancing as a reporter in Chicago. And she was uh, asked to uh, interview somebody who was on um, death row. He was going to be executed 48 hours. So she went to interview this person and she asked this person, um, you know, lots of questions. And at the end of the conversation, this person said to her, so how did I do? So how did I do? And she said, you know, it struck me that he was going to die in 48 hours. But all he wanted was all he wanted was validation on how he did uh, in the interview. Then wow. she said, after that, after that. She's interviewed everyone, including, of course, me, but, you know, big people like George Bush Sr., George Bush Jr., Bill Clinton, you name it. Listen, she you're says, big too, brother. No, no, but, but she said, at the end of it, everybody asked, how did how I did do? I do? <laughs> so all I had to do is, all I had to do is validate their story. Mm. And that's my mission now, to validate what other people are thinking deep in themselves. And that is my mission right now. And then, you know what she said after that? She said, you got my girl, Alicia. <laughs> she yes. said, you got my girl, Alicia. So I'm so happy that she's doing this 21 day meditation. So, you know, just want to share with everyone, you and I also have the blessings of a great human being that I've known now for almost 30 years. Wow. And I wanted uh, the world to know that Alicia Keys is now taking over the divine feminine for the next generation. Uh, wow. We are kind of old hats now. Um, so now answering your question about yeah. the divine masculine. Um, here's how it is regarded in tr traditional um, wisdom traditions and you know i although i'm very familiar with the african wisdom traditions and the eastern and the western there is a common theme okay about uh, 
the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So in the Eastern wisdom traditions, like in Buddhism and even in aspects of Gnostic Christianity, the Gnostic Gospels, the Gospels of Thomas. By the way, if you've ever seen paintings of um, the Vatican, where Thomas had the Last Supper, um, he's the only one who's not white. Okay, <clears throat> Thomas is, and he's of, often referred to as, uh, uh, as Doubting Thomas, because he always challenged Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and many people actually think that Thomas, we don't know whether he's African, Indian, whatever, but he was definitely not white. <laughs> and he was also always challenging Jesus. And so many people say, maybe Thomas was actually Jesus's teacher. <clears throat> but now let, let's go to the traditions where this is represented as both divine masculine and feminine. So the word for the divine masculine in these Eastern traditions, even in the Gnostic Gospels, as I interpret them, the word for the divine masculine is pure consciousness, which means infinite possibilities, infinite possibilities, pure consciousness. But in order to manifest that pure consciousness into this world of space, time, causality, human beings, tra stars, trees, everything. In order for that divine masculine to manifest as the universe, it needs the divine feminine. And the divine feminine is referred to as Shakti, literally Shakti, which means I like power. That. I love okay? Shakti. And Shakti is self-power instead of agency power. Agency power comes from, you know, you're the president of the country, you're the head of the corporation, you're a billionaire, whatever. But agency power lasts only as long as the agency is there. Then it's gone. So if we want real power, mm. then we need Shakti. And Shakti starts with joy, not with happiness. Mm. Happiness is always for a reason. But Shakti says, I am full and enough in myself, and my nature is joy. That is called Ananda Shakti, Ananda, mm -hmm. bliss. Then the second Shakti that comes from there is the Shakti of intentionality, the power of intention organized around joy. So that's called Kriya Shakti, intention Shakti, mm. which leads to Icha Shakti, which is the spontaneous fulfillment of desire, which also leads to what is called Gyan Shakti, which is the knowledge that the divine masculine cannot do anything unless the divine feminine activates that as Shakti. Now you said, is it only masculine? Is it only feminine? Is it LGBT? Is it transgender? It's all of the above, because this combination of the masculine and feminine can appear in infinite forms. In fact, if you look at some of the iconography of ancient wisdom traditions, the divine is always represented as both masculine and feminine. You know, one of my friends long time ago was Michael Jackson. And when I met him uh, at his ranch many, many years ago, the first thing he showed me is iconography of deities that were both masculine and feminine. And I, I, I got it then that, you know, we artificially divide ourselves as these labels and these genders. In right. fact, we are all of the right. above. This is powerful. Now, this is powerful. This, this genderlessness, this labellessness is really something I think that I pulled from um, our meditation and from thinking about, you know, what it all really means. I mean, we, 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 it really, I think we start to conform so much to so many constrictions and boxes because of these labels that are placed upon us in so many ways that I love this idea that, you know, it all goes together. And that's really the point. And I do, I do love one of the things you said to me is that, you know, we all come from a mother. And, and, and so that, that connection to the feminine energy that is so powerful and, and does deserve so much uplifting, but it's, but it's genderless like this. We put, we say feminine and we automatically put a certain gender on it and it's, and it's actually genderless. And so I think that's just like the masculine is actually genderless 
And to your point, that's why everything, however we identify, is actually within all of us. And so getting out of this mind state, which is very an oppressive mind state that we have to fit in these boxes and in these labels, is completely liberating. And I think that's one of the things that I feel so strongly with listening to the 21-day meditation on the Divine Feminine. It, it, it actually breaks it down in those degrees and that we are that expansive, that we are that undefinable you know that we can create um everything and we have everything within us to create and so this is this is this is powerful i mean that's cool that you answered that thank you because I, I thought that was just such an interesting um question that came to me from somebody and i was like you know what this is a good conversation point is let's get into the divinity within us all because we have this higher capacity that we all can reach and there's nothing stopping us literally and when we're talking about feminine masculine, we're just talking about qualities of awareness. That's all we're talking about. And mm -hmm. awareness is mm -hmm. infinite, infinite. So it mm -hmm. includes every quality. And sometimes we, with our limited understanding, say this is sacred, this is profane. This is a sinner, this is a saint. Mm -hmm. But actually, we are all of the above. You know, they say that the saint has a past and the sinner has a future. So just let it be. <laughs> You know, oh. just let it Oh, be. did you hear? No, 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 no. He did it again. Did you hear? He said the saint has a past and the sinner has a future. So just let it be. No, that is so, because it's judgment. This is what we do. We judge everything and everyone. And mostly we judge ourselves like in this harsh, harsh way. And so I love, I love that. Like, just let it be. Just let everybody grow. Let us to continue to learn. Let us continue to find our path. And, and that's the most important thing, you know, is just continuing to find who you are and who you, who you want to be, who you're meant to be, who you're, you know, who you're discovering. So that's, that's interesting. I'm looking for questions on here. Everybody's saying that I might be distracted by the comments. I'm not. I actually, I'm tuned in and I actually want to know if there's anything that people are wondering. Some people have said um, that they found it, they find their mind so distracting when meditating or when doing this meditation. It's 21 day meditation, which by the way, it's the last day that y'all can sign up for free. So if you haven't signed up yet, make sure that you jump on because first of all, the Chopra app is amazing. I'm on it all the time. I'm listening to the meditation myself. There's retreats and there's information and there's things for kids and there's stories and there's so many things that you can really get into with it. So make sure you definitely sign up today. So if, if, they're, if someone's meditating and you hear all these thoughts in your head, which right, everything's in our mind, all this judgment, all this limitation that's been placed on us, what what do you do? Do you, you know, I've been told to just keep going. I've been told to just like, you know, let it um, observe it and then let it pass. What do you do? Because I'm sure things come in your head, too. Um, and, and, and what do you do with those thoughts that are in your head? So, you know, over the years, it's been a process. Over the years, I've realized that every judgment I have about the other is actually a projection of my judgments about myself. So anytime you're defensive before you're attacked, anytime you seek to give explanation without being asked, anytime you label, anytime you use verbal, verbal formulas, anytime you stereotype based on race or religion or economics or privilege, you're actually judging yourself, not the other person. And mm. as long as you're aware of that, then slowly you stop labels. You stop labels and let it be. Because when you let it be, you realize that there is, there is some truth in every judgment, but there is also a lot of untruth in every judgment. So, you know, the Buddha said one of the eightfold paths to enlightenment is right perspective. And what he said, right perspective is either no perspective or all perspectives. Now, that is brilliant because once you understand, you know, <laughs> once you understand that, they say, you know, everybody has a story and they're all valid or they're all equally unvalid. So once again, let it be. It's the famous song 
of the Beatles. Let it be. Mother he Mary comes said, to me. He just said, there's And Eva. Mother Mary is the divine feminine. Listen, the Beatles were dropping all that information yeah. and, and learning and open to learning so much. He just said, the best perspective is either no no perspective or all perspectives not this That's in between right. stuff this is crazy oh my gosh it's so good somebody asked how do they get to the app you can download it on your app store, Chopra. You know, you just go to Chopra. You see, that's where where, where Deepak is calling in from. So C H O P R A. Get it on your get it on the app store. Download it right to your phone. Get right into it. It's so beautiful. A couple of other people asked me about the songs in A minor um, letters. A lot, my my, I just celebrated the 20th anniversary of my first album, Songs in A Minor, Deepak, and the love and the letters and and. And the memories is 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 so good, and so to everybody who who did that and, and spread love and and who's uh, gotten the deluxe album um, for, for our AK20 celebration is definitely amazing. Um, somebody said, "Hmm, it's I find it's not about changing ourselves; it's about resting into ourselves." How beautiful! So that is what liberation is. Liberation is never. Liberation is not of a person. Liberation is from a person. Do, do I make myself clear? The moment I liberate myself mm -hmm. from my self-importance, mm -hmm. mm. I stop it. I stop canceling other people's stories. Okay, we are now living in what we call the cancel, cancel culture, right? Mm -hmm. Cancel so and so, cancel. But the moment I rest in my true being. I observed that that which I call Deepak is a changing story anyway. Why defend it and why attack other people's stories? That's oh my gosh! Source. Because you... that's where creativity comes from. When you accept all stories and you realize that fundamental reality is ambiguous, it's contradictory, it's full of uh, paradox, and if it weren't, we'd all be algorithms. Oh my gosh. No, that's really cool because I think that's I think that's so hard for us. We feel like we're supposed to be something, right? We're so we're I'm supposed to be a singer. I'm supposed to be a writer. I'm supposed to be successful. I'm supposed to be um a doctor. I'm supposed to be uh, you know, a graduate from school. I'm supposed to be all these things. And I guess what the point is, is that you can do those things. You can, and you should, and you should. You should do them. You should experience them. You should achieve your dreams. You should dream things that you want to try. And you're doing those things. But you are not. I am not. You are not any of those things. We're everything. And that's what, that's what I think is so amazing, especially for our kids and stuff, because I've been thinking about, um, you know, I've been talking a lot with my kids. My, my son, actually, my son got your daughter, Malika Chopra's book for his promotion going into the fifth grade next year. And I thought it was so sweet that, that Malika did a um, did a did a conversation with them um, on Zoom, like an assembly for the kids. And she has this beautiful book, y'all. Like, it's, it's amazing, and it's for kids. And I've actually been making a process that daily we read, me and my kids read a page. And there's exercises, there's breathing exercises, there's thoughts about, like, you know, just actually breathing into your body for one minute and realizing that your breath is you, you know, your breath is you, you know, which is so infinite, so... Um, big love to Malika. Please tell her that is so kind. Uh, I, I, I hope she's watching us right now. She's probably there. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And I was just and, and one thing about our names just came up in one what we've been reading and how, you know, we identify with our names, we identify with, you know, all of the things, our our, our religions, our backgrounds, our color, our, you know, all the things we identify with that we're, you know, a part of who we are or who our parents are or who we think we're supposed to be or whatever. And 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 just I thought it was a beautiful reminder that we can do those things, learn those things, experience those things, but we are actually everything. And, yeah. and, that's, and that's what you're saying. So that person that said resting in myself is, is very incredible. And, and I think the person who asked, Konia, I think you asked about when, when thoughts come in your head as your meditation, 
it kind of what you're saying. Just let it be. That's your thought. That's what it is. Just, just respect it. Okay, there goes a thought. Whatever. Don't attach to it. Don't make it a big deal. Don't extra think about it. Just kind of come back to your breath. Come back to your you. And that's really incredible, man. Oh, wow. I love talking to you. Every time. <laughs> As I was listening to you right now, I was remembering that when we first met, yeah, your son was still in your womb. Yeah, you remember? <laughs> still at the, now there, there he is, a, a, a person by himself. I know. But resting in the self also gives you clarity that yourself is not your selfie. And this is the big thing that's happening in the world right now. People have sacrificed themselves for their selfies. So, you know, they... Whoa, 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 whoa. They've sacrificed their self for their selfies? Wait a yeah. minute. Yeah, this is what it's all about, the culture, right? Right now. It's not about myself. It's about my selfie. Now, as long as we realize that the selfie is fun and engages with other selfies, that's fine. But it's not the self. It's not who we are. Our name, our brand, or whatever, our... our achievements is not who we are mm. who we are who we are is always infinite mm. and we should always remember that and that's the goal of these meditations they're not in a way intellectual they have to be experiential and go beyond all our human constructs about who we think we are i am not deepak chopra that is my name you can find it on LinkedIn. Everything you want to know about that name, you can find it on LinkedIn. If you want to know who I am, then stop judging me and stop judging yourself and we'll all be free. Oh my, wait, nah. This is too, listen, this is too amazing. And I think that, I, lo I love this conversation so much. I hope we have 100 million more. Um, I, the, the thing I think that feels so good about knowing that you are not your name, that you're, you know, you're your name, you, that's just your name, that's not who you are, you are infinite. You know, you are not whatever label, you are who you are, we are infinite. I think that, I think that can calm us a lot. And that's what I, that's what I feel so much by doing the 21 day uh, meditation on the Divine Feminine, which again, make sure you're tuning into it if you haven't yet. A lot of people have asked how to do it if you missed it. You go to the Chopra app, you, right on your phone, download the Chopra app, C-H-O-R-P-A. Today is the last day that you get it for free. It's been free this whole time. It's been so good. But, and you're loving it. And this is the type of conversation that we're having through this meditation. And I, w I was just saying that to know that you are infinite, I think it gives you a security. Because a lot of the times we feel so pressured to be who everybody wants us to be, to live up to whatever expectations we have to, we think we have to live up to, to be wealthy, to be well known, to be whatever. And I think this idea of being infinite and that we are not our labels or these, or the names that have been placed on us or that we even claim um, is so comforting to know that there's this excess. That's what you talk about. We talk about this excess that we can access. Um, there is not an end. There is not something that the faucet just turns off. In fact, it gets bigger. And, and there's more that you get to reach for. And there's more you get to open your mind to and learn about and become. And, and so you, you can feel relaxed and comforted that you're just still growing. You know what I mean? And there's not some like finite ending or something that we all think we have to rush the clock against meeting it's not that so i don't know man this is this is what oh my brother on star is on he is full of wisdom he just said don't be bullied out of your life you know what i mean like to to the point where you are not even living your own life because you're so afraid of everything or you you think you're supposed to do something and you're not following and and tuning into what is it that you what's your direction from here not from here not from here from here you know so anyway as you see i'm 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 loving this this is so beautiful i don't know do you have any departing words that you want to share to well, you just mentioned rest in peace and that's mm -hmm. the peace that 
spiritual traditions talk about the peace that under passes understanding the peace that passes understanding is what meditation is about and if we rest in that peace we have nothing to prove because we are infinite and infinite is enough <laughs> there's nothing more than infinite as enough so rest in peace the, the, it's the peace thing, that passes understanding the last thing that that just took me to something that you said in the meditation which you you thank you for those words every word all the time you said when when you look when you look in front of you all there is is the infinite i mean that's all there is that's all there is as all this as all this as you as me as this watch as this computer as this instagram that's all there is the infinite in disguise as the finite yeah we are all the infinite being in different uniforms this is a uniform I need y'all to just I'm so grateful we could have this time together. Everybody who joined in, who tuned in to this conversation has been touched and blessed. I know for a fact. Um we all feel a little lighter. We all feel a little closer to our infinite. We all remember more of what we already know. So I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for your words that are that you're sharing with us below. Um thank you for continuing to spread the light. Thank you for continuing to learn and and grow and be curious and be interested and 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 to have this 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 all perspective idea or this no perspective idea this thing where we are not having to choose a judgment we we are just open so don't forget to go ahead download the Chopra app this is the last day for the 21 day meditation the free 21 meditation it's been free this whole time so take advantage of something that's going to absolutely fill you up. Thank you so much for all the songs in a minor love. Thank you so much for all of your memories and letters to me. Thank you for all of the key soul care love because that is another way to pour into your infinite being and just remind yourself of how how we can we can create the world that we want and create the energy that we want but most importantly oh thank you for your underdog love the remix is amazing and everybody keeps talking about it on the chat too the app is called chopra c h o p r a so that's all you got to do is 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 go for chopra on your app and download it boom right now but most importantly thank you deepak for this mission that you have in life to just continue to be the example of the infinite and be the example of openness and how we're all learning and you're you're sharing and growing and learning and for bringing us on these journeys and for making things like this possible so that we can have a access point because you know there there's all this access but but most of the time we don't even know how to access it so okay so a lot of people are asking what is the divine feminine after all this conversation okay. so uh, <laughs> my comment is just look at alicia keys she's the divine <laughs> feminine perfect embodiment and then we're all set so thank you for being the embodiment the perfect embodiment of the divine feminine alicia i love you i love you too the divine feminine is all of us and like we said in case you missed it we are def- undefinable and we have all these pieces inside of us and and so please go check out the meditation so that you can continue to grow and learn and 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 learn like we all are this is so fun let's make sure we do another one soon because man my mind is like oh let's oh let's just say the one last thing um a saint has a past and a sinner has a future the saint so has a past the sinner has a future let it be just let it be oh my gosh yo and let the divine feminine come to me <laughs> mother mary come to me that's right so much love blessings Love blessings you. and talk so if you want another amazing video highlighting excellence in the indian community check it out right there next to me i think you'll enjoy it continue to believe and i'll see you there